Well, hello, Thrive Nation. It's going to be the most incredible episode because I've got a real health hero on my hands. He's a skater. He's a father. <laughs> he's a naturopathic physician. But most importantly, he's a biological dentist who's taking the world by storm by seeing the dental uh, area or uh, profession in the most unique way. He's written the most fascinating and informative book called It's All in Your Mouth. What a great read. It's been impressive. I've known a lot about biological dentistry for a while, but there are some incredible new concepts that I've learned with this book. So welcome to the show, Dr. Dominic Nischwitz. Thank you very much for having me, Steve. It's a pleasure. Cool. Well, I do want to jump right into it and talk about what is biological dentistry and how does it differ to traditional dentistry? So in my opinion, biological dentistry is the overlap of high-tech dentistry, functional medicine, biohacking, and health optimization with the goal of overall health optimization. Optimal health is just the goal. Whereas conventional dentistry is kind of only focusing on the high-tech dental part and don't even consider the whole body being also part of the mouth. You know what I mean? Or the mouth I, being part of the whole body. I do know what you mean because you've made some huge statements on the podcast you know, that I've listened to, Ben Greenfield, Joe McCullough, a few others, that you and your peers reckon that 70% of all chronic diseases starts in the mouth. Now, I want you to unpack that and let me know why that statement is true. Yeah, clearly there's not a real, like, number for this, but this is just, like, the information we, they gathered over years. It's mostly Dietrich Klinghardt, like... Thomas Raw Paracelsus Clinic, also Tom Levy, who, who has written the book, um, The Vitamin C Cure. He's also co-authored like all the old school dent biological dentistry books, like um, Root Canal Cover Up or all these things. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Thomas E. Levy. He's yeah. the one, he's the guy I learned all the IV stuff from when I was still in university. So he's a legend. And also put me into this um, yeah, and do it into this route of biological dentistry. So why, why is this? So we are living in an epidemic of chronic disease. We kind of live in a de-evolution area. And so what we see is chronic inflammation, silent inflammation, chronic fatigue, overreactive immune system, problems with toxicity, sleep disorders, like all these chronic things that not all of them make disease. So... And in this epidemic, we need to find root causes. And clearly, a lot of it starts in your mouth. Why? Because from a conventional dentistry point of view, we are the only profession that, are, that is placing loads of different materials that are not supposed to be in your body, in your central nervous system, so to say, or in, in your immune system, directly in the start of your whole microbiome. You can see like the typical oral interference we're looking for as a biological dentist is like metals, all metals, not just the mercury fillings, gold, metals, alloys, there's everything like molybdenum, nickel, cobalt, like even steels and stuff from old like tanks, whatever you find, titanium. Then root canals like has some hidden health challenges that nobody knows. We have cavitation stuff that nobody knows of because that's something you don't even learn in university. And, of course, also the whole biting situation because your mouth is kind of like the thermostate for your whole posture. So if you have something wrong there, it's also a problem. And, of course, the whole mouth is like the entrance to your gut system. It's kind of like the entrance to everything. It is, the, um, yeah, it, it has a big microbiome in there, which you get basically when you go through the womb outside into the world you get your, the vaginal fluid and then you get breastfed. You have this microbiome and it changes over time with eating patterns, but it definitely changes when you get outside materials placed into your mouth. So the problem is the conventional dentist is still only, not that it's a bad thing, but it's mostly focusing on fixing biting issues, fixing and repairing rotten teeth with one, own, one and only one purpose, biting and maybe cosmetic like an aesthetic view but not connecting the dots to an overall body but you're working on a whole nervous system a tooth is not just a hard thing it's not just like hair it's actually hair is also living tissue but it's 
it's way more. It's like hard as stone, but as sensitive so that it can touch like a hair. And it has a blood supply, a regular tooth, a natural one has a blood supply, a lymph supply, an autonomic nervous system. And it's on top, like kind of like the extension of your brain and on top of the trigeminal nerve, which is one of the 12 cranial nerves, which starts here in your brainstem. And if you understand the whole anatomy, if you understand immunology, the autonomic nervous system, cytokines, detoxification, liver phase one, two, you just ha basically have to connect the dots and you have a big missing link in functional medicine. And this is the look into your oral cavity from a biological dentistry functional medicine point of view. And this is why they come up with this ridiculously high number, 70%. Why? Because nobody's looking there and this affects you 24-7 because you cannot buy your hack your way around a titanium implant. You cannot buy your hack your way around a root canal which might cause problems or you might be allergic to or to any other allergic things that are um, like installed in your body. And that's not outside body. Even if the FDA still declares everything that's on your teeth as a device, meaning it's not, it doesn't have to go through a toxicological report or something. It's just like stuff that's outside body. Kind of like a hangover. You're just a dentist. You don't even know what you're doing. So you don't but know it, about... It sounds, uh, you know, Dominic, it sounds like the dentists have to go through training like you did to become naturopathic physicians to, you know, start looking at functional medicine. I mean, is there functional medicine specifically for dentists? Not that I know of. They've got to go now traditionally you know, do functional medicine courses. I'm, I'm not sure how many dentists are going to want to take the craftsmanship. They're great craftsmen, you know. They can work the teeth and make sure that they look good, fit correctly, and the bite's good. But how many of them do you want to transition to the second part of what biological dentistry, which is the naturopathic physician, and it's the functional medicine side, understanding micronutrients and macronutrients and diet and sunlight and, and these things, you know? Is there a place for those traditional dentists to transition? So first of all, the entrance cards, so we train dentists to, for the whole spectrum. First of all is... The entrance card is still high-tech dentistry. And if you would just get dentists, conventional dentists, to do the high-tech dentistry, biological dentistry part, which is no metals, no root canals, no cavitations, good bite. Instead of titanium, you use ceramic, ceramic implants. This is my specialty. This would be a huge uh, help for all of us out there already. So they don't even need to be functional medicine doctors yet because you can partner up and have those in your clinic. I'm, we are training in our... So, um, I was the, the president of the International Society for Metal Free Implantology, and I'm now the vice president again because of time issues. And, um, but we have a full curriculum in place where we train step by step the whole protocol to start a biological dentistry clinic. There is courses about the nutrition I give, like the macronutrient time and the micronutrient tuning. But it, when they do the curriculum, and have all the courses, they are really specialized in at least the craftsmanship. They have to present, like I'm, an, I'm the examiner, they have to do uh, 100 documented ceramic implant cases and with the whole protocol, they get an oral exam and they also have a written exam. And then I have to have the feeling, those are good dudes or good gals, whatever, that I would like to go there and have surgery myself. So I have to feel comfortable and then they pass. So it's really hard for them to pass because we have to set the standard. And I call this the level one of biologic dentistry entrance, even if it's a, such a high entrance card. And then I will look at these guys. Are there into, is there a passion to help next level? Like, do they really want to upgrade and do all the recovery things, the IV nutrition, the bone healing protocols, food designs, all the stuff I've implemented over the last 15 years? If yes, I pick me these guys and then we do kind of like um, special training afterwards. So we're working on it, but so far it's only, we only have, or we at least have 32 really um, special, we call them specialists in biological dentistry and ceramic implants, level one. And they're only almost exclusively in Germany and Switzerland. So it's really tough for us to recommend anybody right now, like everywhere, because I, you, you can understand, my kind of like my phases on top of this and i want to have this the next level of medicine so i want to really change the level how medicine and dentistry is done overall and in this case we have to be really research based and really do this top notch and you cannot allow like 
kind of like, I don't know how you call it in English, but guys that just had one course with me and then write it like marketing. He's trained by Dr. Nishitz and this, this, yeah. because this happens already right now. So we really have to have the next level of standard care so that health optimization, biological dentistry or health optimization medicine becomes the future basically. Mm. So then it I takes think time. So, yeah, it takes time and it takes effort, it takes a commitment to the cause, I'm sure. It takes a lot of being ostracized, you know, from the traditional sort of dental community or medical community. You've got to be a real pioneer to stick to your guns and really have a strong belief that this is the way to sort of adopt the correct dental sort of program and wellness program as well. And then the yes. third level is the biohacking. You know, you're wearing blue blocking glasses. How many of these dental practitioners that firstly become exceptional craftsmen, then they become functional medicine dentists, then move on to the biohacking side, you know, where they start looking at light, environment, your EMFs, which we're going to hopefully get into, which are very, very important. I'm a geobiologist, you know, trained by GeoVital in Austria to assess all these electromagnetic fields, all these electrical fields, you know, and the damaging high frequency and radio frequency waves that are causing significant problems into our systems. But how many of those are going to transition into that area of biohacking health optimization? That's another question. So, yeah. So in the curriculum, or at least the, the guys that are now, it took me 10 years to get my friends from university to see that this is a new thing. So ever since 2019, there are way more dentists in my age group now coming. Before, it was only old dentists, like 30 years older than me that I was training because they kind of learned it through the experience. But now it's becoming like a, I hope it's becoming a trend because um, they see, wow, I can do my high-level skills, which is really like playing extreme Legos. It's like really difficult stuff. It's achievement-oriented, but I can also help people get healthy on the next day. They tell you, I'm not depressed anymore. I feel way better. I feel my emotions are back. My hands are warm. My hands are cold. I know you're an acupuncturist. So I can, we can dive into all the connection with the nervous system mm -hmm. and the uh, um, meridians. So this is the fulfilling part. And now they are coming. And I call them the young and wild biohacking dentists. And this is really cool because all of them, probably because of me as a leader also, they start by themselves. They have to. They go to me. I, I have so many pa uh, patients of mine are my friends and dental colleagues. They start with them remove their methods, remove their root canals, start with the same process. Then they get pre prepared like we do with all patients. They mm -hmm. have to change their lifestyle, their nutrition, their macros, they, they time their macros, they tune their micros, bone healing protocol. They learn the IVs, everything on themselves because only then it will click and they understand, wow, I can get myself healthier. So the goal to help my patient is not to do an implant. The goal is optimal health for me and everybody else. And this is what we do now on train. And this is what I'm working on building a big community of like-minded, I just call them health coaches. You could ever do whatever. And so everybody has to speak the same language and the mouse just have, has to be a foundational piece in your practice, in the practice of a physician, the practice of, a, uh, of my friends that are trainers, like they, or like physiotherapists, they all have like chronic joint problems and they never know what to do. Most likely it's coming from something in your mouth. Yeah. or at least 70% again. Yeah, great. I want you to take us through your daily sort of dental routine. When you wake up in the morning, what you do, how you brush, what you brush with. Do you use mouthwash? Do you floss? Just take us through the daily routine of Dominic Nishwitz. Like daily oral routine or just yeah. the dental routine? No, da daily oral and dental. Whatever you do for your, your oral for health. Teeth. Yeah, your oral health, yeah. Yeah, basically, I have to say the most important part of this is kind of boring, probably, is it's nutrition and how you eat. But just for cleaning, I always do oil pulling in the morning, basically just do a coconut oil. I spice it up with a little bit of peppermint oil and I have some um, oregano oil right now because of viruses and things. And it, I think it tastes kind of like a pizza then. <laughs> and you put it into the coconut. Yeah, it tastes. I like that stuff. It tastes amazing. You could also put in a bit of propolis, which is antiviral too, and um, a few other nice things. And then just basically keep it in your mouth while I would do. At the same time, I would probably just stretch, do my morning routine, get a little bit of blood flowing, and spit it out. I most of the time brush my teeth only once a day. I use an electric toothbrush. I, of course, use a fluoride-free toothpaste. 
I don't DIY it myself. I get loads of stuff um, sent right, right at the moment to test, like lots of um, good powders are coming out. Uh, not really paste. It's just like powder. You just dip in and they, they are basically herbs. It's amazing ideas. And mm -hmm. um, Ayurvedic stuff with curcuma in it, but also just these essential oils in it. Basically, it is what you eat. So you shouldn't apply any chemicals and most importantly, no fluoride because this is just like a toxin that you really don't need, even if that's like conventional dentistry standards. And this is what we learn in university. So I'm using right now an aloe vera Basically. Aloe vera. Can I just interrupt you there? Because I think fluoride is so important. You know, there are so many, you know, my family, my friends, my colleagues, the people that are close to me, the people that I've spoken to about health and, and wellness and how damaging toxic blue light is and yes. uh, your cell phones. But when it comes to fluoride, they just, <laughs> there's a block. Now, is there research showing how damaging fluoride is? Is this common sort of scientific knowledge or you know, are people just denying the truth? What is going on with fluoride? No, I think it's just, a, so I just, so the, the, the point of view of a conventional dentist or what you learn in university is that fluoride will help you strengthen, uh, like help you strengthen your teeth and also disinfect. It's a strong disinfect. That's correct. It's a strong disinfectant, but it's also a massive toxin. Why would you want to disinfect a living organism, which is your oral microbiome? It's like disinfecting your hands all the time. In my opinion, this is not a good strategy for your immune system. Better you eat more dirt, yeah, like the, the other way around, like as a kid. So this is one point. Also, of course, there are chemical changes if you get fluoride and it goes into your, um, and it goes into your HCL containing stomach acid. It changes, gets more gassy. So it's just not a good idea to have it there. There's a lot of research, I think. Also a lot of conspiracy things, but um, there is research showing, for example, when they, fluor when they fluorided water, and I think it was San Francisco and Los Angeles, don't, like, I'm not 100% sure, but you will find the study. They could see that it's, uh, yeah, that actually health declined where they had fluorided water. So they stopped this. And I think they started fluoriding it because fluoride is basically just a byproduct of any sort of, um, I think it was something with the with spaceships. It had something to do with spaceships. Kind of like, what do we do with the flu with the fluoride now? Okay, we just fluoride our water. It must be good. It didn't show up to be a very good idea. And you find loads of research, but the research again is not not in dental magazines because, of course, it's the marketing side, it's industry. But if you just type in fluoride and whatever, you will find lots of things. Same with all the problems in your mouth. You have to really look outside of the box. If you, for example, you heard about cytokines, yeah, you did. chronic inflammatory cytokines are TNF alpha, IL, IL, IL1, interleukin 1 beta, mm -hmm. IL6, NF kappa B. Those are kind of like the, the bad guys. There's loads of studies showing that you have high IL6, etc., from, for example, an apical periodontitis, like a cyst on, on an apex of a root canal to your tooth. But if you don't know what it does systemically, you never connect the dots. It's like, it's kind of like there's just an update missing in terms of knowledge. So the dentists just normally don't know. Of course, that's what they learned from me, but normally they just don't connect the dots that it could be because of, of an inflammatory process on the tip of your tooth. You can have high levels of um, CRP, highly sensitive CRP. Or like I said, high levels of TNF alpha, IL-6. And then you know, okay, high levels of IL-6 can lead to insulin resistance can lead to hypogonadism, can lead to loss of um, production of, let's say, growth hormone. You will find anything, but you just have to PubMed this, but nobody does it. Only freaks like us PubMed things on the weekend because we're just interested in how it works, probably because we had a strong why for ourselves, so I had to get myself healthy first. It took me a while to figure out that I'm a right spot as a dentist. I didn't, shoot, didn't really like start a dentistry as my passion. It was more like, Oh, I'm now in civil service. I should do something in university. Oh, and in civil service, I had an internship in the dental clinic. By any, this was just like randomly. We had to do an internship. And they they placed me in dental. So I did I did extractions there. Even if I was just a civil servant, they thought I was a, I was a student. I did like extractions. Then I, I just applied, 
and didn't know what to expect. I just knew my dad is a dentist and just knew it has something to do with teeth and like you need good skills, fingers. And I had that. I didn't know about chemistry, biochemistry, physics. I probably, probably have thought otherwise then. But I took the challenge and actually grew into it. But even after university, um, it took me, I would say, at least four more years to figure out, wow, dentistry is actually the part where it's the most impact. So I was learning the naturopathic doctor, functional medicine in, in Los Angeles, IFM, like everything you could find. And I thought I'm going to be a consultant only for functional medicine. But then it clicked when I had like a solution for all these chronic problems. Like I didn't have a solution for root canal. I'm a surgeon, so I'm trained in titanium implantology. And back then, 10 years ago, there was almost nobody doing ceramic implants. But then I found someone and then I had my full concept. And then kind of it builds on top and you get kind of like, you get kind of like sucked into the matrix and get addicted to this and you just find the details and details and details. And it all started for me when I was 20 years old from my own problems back then. Yeah. I just got sick and I just looked for my things and for yeah. health optimization. I didn't know the word and just looked for what I can do to optimize my performance for skateboarding back then, mm. jumping higher. I wanted to have like muscle, of course, like everybody wants and started fitness and then came into the nutritional context. Basically, nutrition is what, it, what it's all started. I mm. couldn't connect it while being on, uh, on studying. I did that for me personally. But in retrospect, you have to learn biochemistry. And back then, when I learned biochemistry, I was already into supplements, whey protein, glutamine, creatine, all these sports nutrition stuff. And then I read it. And for me, it was like a no-brainer then. This is probably because I like biochemistry so much. My brain thinks like it and I could at the same time use it, use the knowledge. So I was really good at this. But it took me years after university to see how I can really use this knowledge to help other people. So this Brilliant. is why this was a concept that developed over years. You almost went from pain, you were sick, you weren't well, you know, growing up, and you went from pain to purpose. And one of your purposes is, from what it sounds like, from being a skater and an athlete, is that you just want to optimize and maximize your performance in every single area whether yes. it's in dentistry, whether it's in someone else's health, whether it's in your own health, your family's health, your colleagues, you want to just maximize their health and their performance. And I think that's been driving you to yeah. put out a fortune of work and training and writing this book, which is just a resource second to none. So well done to you. Let's go back to your daily routine. What else do you do for your teeth? If you floss, if you don't floss, if you use mouthwash, if you don't use mouthwash. No, babe. I'm very boring and kind of, so I don't use floss only if something gets stuck. I, I have to say, I don't have any dental work done. Th those are all my regular teeth. So I have very tight, nice gums. So my teeth, they fit together. There's no fillings, no gaps. So in nature, there is no flossing. And I don't have like a fur on my teeth because my food and my nutritional concept is providing me with the nutrients that have like, a, they, they kind of like, uh, brush their te the teeth at the same time when you eat them. More harder stuff, like more natural foods. So I don't use it, but of course, if you have like dental work done, you maybe have some fillings and like, it's different than normal, then you might use, need to use something like a floss. But I see it a little bit critical. So if you have natural teeth, why would you disturb this nice area? So you have your saliva, you have a pellicle around your teeth, which kind of makes your teeth glide next to each other. Your teeth are not fixed in your, in your jaw. They are kind of like hanging in there. Imagine a trampoline with these um, things. So your tooth can go up, down, sideways to grind, to bite, to compensate for super hard stuff. So it kind of like, I don't, I'm blanking on the word, but it, it's really like flexible yeah. in there and it grinds and it glides right next to each other. That's because of the pedicle and the fluids. And there's the gum going in between. And normally there is no black holes or something. It's just filled up. And the gum is connected to your tooth. There's a little bit of a sulcus around the tooth. It's about two millimeters where you can measure fluids and where you have a li little bit of a lymphatic drainage, like a fluid inside. But besides this, it's connected. And this means your gum is outside body. It's kind of like your tissue here or your gut cells. So if you get any cut there or any inflammation on your gum, like from a, from a flossing, if you're not like gentle, you rip it through and then you bleed like all patients do, you're opening it up every day. So you're getting leaky gum, not leaky gut, 
So this starts in your mouth already. So now you're having bacteria in your mouth and there's a nice opening and it, they can just go into your periodontium and from there in your whole body. See, skin, inside skin, gums and gut cells is outside body. It's kind of like a huge worm through you and in between this and in this, this is your cells. So this is protection. Uh, this is why I'm really critical with um, flossing. There are people that are very skilled and do that very gently, but most people just like smack, smack, smack every day. And then they tell me, oh, when I floss, it's bleeding always. Yeah, of course, because you don't know what, how and doing it way too rough and you're actually destroying it. So then I wouldn't recommend it. So, and so you do oil pulling, you don't really floss unless there's something like a piece of meat or a piece of pineapple in your teeth. Okay, you're very gentle if you do floss. You then use an electric toothbrush once a day, twice a day, hold it very gently to the teeth, polish the teeth. How yes. do you actually brush your teeth? With an electric toothbrush, I, I find it's very easy if you have a good one. So I think it's just a, an ultrasound uh, toothbrush, which basically it oscillates and also pushes back and forth. And you don't really brush. You just hold it on your teeth. And what the, the head of or the brushing does, it goes in these little sulcus. So the, the tiny uh, brushes go inside and cleans them very well. So you go, run, you kind of like go over your gum tissue. And I just polish every teeth from the outside and the inside and above real quick. Because it's this, I have a strategy in how to do this, it only takes me two minutes. So basically I start here, go around, inside, around. And I have every tooth clean. And I find with this tooth, um, with this um, toothbrush, and I'm not affiliated or anything. I don't even know what the company is. I just have this one. <laughs> I'm not big. I'm not big into any uh, products there. It just feels like a professional cleaning every time. So I only need it once a day. And because I don't drink cokes or any like very starchy things or like sugary things that initially put the fur on your teeth which is then like the ground for all these bacteria to attach themselves and build even more. I don't need to brush them too much. I mostly do it also for like smelling reasons uh, because I don't want to have like a, ma a mad um, mouth odor or whatever you want to yeah. say. And you asked me about um, rinses. Um, I basically just do, do the coconut oil pulling, but you could do, there are some good rinses and it's mostly again, oil bait or like, like, um, Essential, Essen oils. essential oil based stuff that you could use. I would never use any chemical stuff. You could do the, um, what is it, H -O H -O -C -L, the hypochlorous acid, because this is also good against viruses, for example, corona and stuff. If that lurks in your mouth, which it does, mm. uh, disinfecting with HOCL is a pretty good strategy. You can do this. And it doesn't bother your immune system. That's a mm. good thing. You can use it, it's fine, and it kills all these things. Like, like, uh, propolis does too so basically nature has anything everything it needs you could all, almost say that probably every botanical out there has antimicrobial purposes and most of the vitamins minerals and macronutrients and it's the, like nature's pharmacy is the nutrition if you have it correctly done mm -hmm. this is why we have such a big emphasis on it it's a whole mm -hmm. chapter in the book yeah. Tell us about uh, the pellicle and the saliva. I mean, I got taught at medical school, the saliva is really there to start breaking down, you know, your food in your mouth. And that's all I knew in terms of its importance. But there's a lot more to the pellicle. There's a lot more to saliva and how it's roll with uh, leaky gum. So, yes, the saliva is it's just an, an amazing fluid. The more I think about it, so at the beginning when I wrote the uh, chapters, I was like, man, saliva is kind of boring. But then when you dig deep into saliva, it's like, wow, it's a massive fluid. It's like, what you first say, this is mostly what you learn. It's like, it's there to digest, pre-digest food. You, you, when you smell food, when you cook, you already start uh, salivating. Salivating, yeah. Salivating, why? Because it's actually activating something and your enzymes get produced. This one thing. Also, you know, if you, for example, get stung by a bee or you hurt yourself, you initially do this, yeah? Or your mom puts your saliva on your, on your wound. Why? Because you have peptides in there and loads of proteins that actually help with, um, with healing and kind of like um, glue it is all together and are antibacterial. And, and again, wow. there's an immune system in your saliva that's IgAs and lots of immunoglobulins, peptides, and the proteins, whatever. And yeah, of course, it's also an electrolyte, which 
um, which flows around your teeth. And your teeth are crystals. They're kind of, they are just minerals, kind of like a salt, a huge one. And they get, re, uh, they get demineralized and remineralized all the time. And the saliva provides this, de depending, of course, on the electrolyte status or mineral status of your body. So if you have a depleted body, your saliva is depleted. For example, saliva production goes down if you're in stress. Imagine you have loads of stressors in there, like metals and inflammation. You have a dry mouth all the time. Nothing tastes good. You, don't, can, you cannot even pre-digest anything. Um, you have, yeah, dry mouth sucks ass, kind of like, yeah, sorry. It's really uncomfortable if you have dry mouth. You know it, maybe if you have like in a stressy situation, you're like, yeah. <gasps> like numb, numb mouth. You, do, you don't taste anything anymore. And same thing for your teeth. They get, they get brittle, they get yeah, more, yeah, brittle is probably a perfect word. Mm. Yeah. They, don't get, they don't get really nourished anymore. Teeth also get nourished from the inside, but also from the outside. That's something important to notice. Great. The pellicle, tell us about the pellicle, how important yeah, the, that is. It's the first time I learned about it in your book, which was in, incredible. I, I mean, it's just so much. Uh, I just can't high, highly more recommend this book. I'm going to be giving it to my own biological dentist, Dr. Rogers, that I've been with. You know, he's been in Switzerland under training. I'd love to know who his mentor is in Switzerland, but probably if, someone. If, that, he go, if he goes to Switzerland, this is our curriculum. Yeah. So if he was in, he probably went to see Ulrich, like it's Swiss Biohealth, yes. which is the, this is where we do our curriculum for the, the ISMI is the International Society for Metal Free Implantology. And this is the education center in this clinic. So Ulrich Falls myself, we basically train all the dentists together with now a bigger team or the board of directors. We now bring in universities. So he might have uh, started training there already. So he knows. Yeah. Um, at least the, the basic part. Yeah. So the pellicle, actually, same thing for me. I learned a bit about it in university, but I got fascinated writing the book. And I always imagine, I said the same thing to Ben, but he, didn't, he doesn't uh, look movies. So have you seen the movie Venom? I haven't. With a range but do you know that. Venom? Yeah, yeah. You know Venom? Yeah, Venom sure. is this Venom is this like black, like very tiny, natty stuff. It goes on top of everything and then gets the monster, right? Yeah. And this is kind of like I imagine the pellicle all the time. It's kind of like this liquid net that goes on top of your teeth and builds kind of like it. It's kind of like a, an unseen protection of your tooth because it makes it gliding to each other. But also, of course, provides um, electrons and, of course, like an electrostatic thing. It's just a protecting and nourishing thing on your, and on your tooth. And because it's, you can destroy it like a million times a day, probably, or thousands of times a day, it gets rebuilt. So this is why I imagine it like this venom net, like wood comes up again, uh, always protecting your tooth and protecting side movements and everything. Mm -hmm. And right. of course, it's also like where you can attach, like as a bacteria or a microbiome uh, and your, the biofilms attach themselves. So that's why it's also good to clean it from time to time. Great. And I think it's just fascinating, you know, with your partner or your spouse, you share the saliva, you share the pellicle, you share the microbiome in your mouth, you know, then obviously sex, you're sharing the vaginal and the, you know, the penile microbiome. I mean, you become almost one microbiome together, the two of you. I mean, we, we basically are hosts, you know, 10 to 1 with regards to human cells versus the microbiome. It's, it's fascinating. The more people you touch and engage with and the closer you people you touch, the more you share this fascinating microbiome. So uh, tell us about the oral microbiome and how important that is. Yes, the oral microbiome is very diversified, I would say. It is there's, depending on the literature you read, is about four to seven fold as big as the one like at the end, like your colon microbiome or the gut microbiome where most of the people talk about. And it makes perfect sense because this is the first attack. This is, the, your immune system is kind of like your army against invaders like parasites, viruses, bacteria, microorganisms, or just call them bugs. And it sits in your, and it sits in your saliva and your whole mouth, the microbiome. You have commensal bacteria, stuff that just lives with you. There's also pathogenic bacteria living with you. Loads of different things. The, the, in my opinion, the only thing that needs to be there is balance. Yeah? If something goes out of balance, you compartmentalize, for example, some anaerobics in a root canal tooth or in a cavitation, 
then it, this is when the problem happens because your immune system is there to, to be not aggressive, but kind of like looking that the whole thing is in symbiosis. And this is what happens if you put in dental work. If you, for example, had an amalgam filling, an amalgam filling, the mercury, there's 50% mercury in a silver amalgam filling. Mercury kills the good bacteria, not just in your mouth, but also further down in your gut, which leads to dysbiosis. Mostly bugs coming in like virus, and eh, not vi the virus also, but um, it's pretty prone to then um, fungi like candida. It's very well known if you have uh, heavy metal toxicity that candida will grow a bit, bit better. Or also mold is a lot of uh, what we see a lot in cavitations. So compartmentalizing of the bad boys is a problem. Not having all them, yeah, like a big diversified microbiome is amazing, but don't have it compartmentalized. Or for example, if you have ground, metal-based crown that has like um, edges where the biofilm can attach themselves even better and there's different molecules than ions, it's kind of like these bugs use the metal ions to arm themselves, like build skyscraper houses with metal armor in it. So you're really doing a bad job for the good immune system and it's a good job for the for the wrong guys, let's say like this. Make, does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So you, have, you need your microbiome for, of course, for digestion. You need it for invaders, but you also need it to have a symbiotic living. So you know now that the microbiome basically does everything for us. Like, yeah. It produces our neurotransmitters. It, change, it can actually, there are, there are tribes somewhere in like the Amazonian region I read about they only eat sweet potato, but their microbiome is so great. They can ba this microbiome basically builds anything they need out of the sweet potato. Yeah. It's amazing. Makes so vitamin C, makes vitamin B, yeah. makes, makes everything. All, everything in the microbiome. They don't have to vitamin. supplement with anything, you know, makes vitamin D. Yeah. Makes serotonin, makes yeah. neurotransmitters, like, yeah, like everything basically. It's your whole... I think you only a tenth of all our cells in your body is yeah. only your DNA, your own human DNA. So of course yeah. your whole family, your tribe is sharing the whole um, fluids and like the whole biome. It's an amazing yeah. co concept. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Dominic, I want you to just clearly state that I want to ask this question. Is there any place, and I know the answer, is there any place for an amalgam in the mouth? No, no way. Amalgam is... <laughs> It's 50% mercury. And if you know that mercury is the most toxic, non-radioactive element known to men, there's just no function or no purpose in your body. It's, it should be below the earth where it's supposed to be and not outside because it's just a neurotoxin. It could basically mimic any symptom that you know that is known to men. It shouldn't be in your mouth. But if it's already in there, don't just pull it out or let it drill out like a conventional way. Find a skilled dentist who knows how to safely remove the amalgam fillings. And safe removal just doesn't, doesn't cut it if you only use a rubber dam. You use rubber dam, you use cleanup suction, you need oral, uh, you need a nasal pro. We use an IQ air extractor, which is like 99% of all the air gets extracted. Um, a, su a big suction device actually. And we drill around the, the filling to kind of like break it out so that, that we don't, we, the goal would be to not get more exposure to the toxic mercury and other things in there that the patient already had, which he has because it's about two to three micrograms of mercury vapor and other things leaching out of one filling any day, every day, 24-7, um, over years. And this adds up to getting your body chronically intoxicated. And mercury filling is still the, the biggest source of mercury toxicity on the planet. Even if the air is now mercury loaded, you cannot find a place without mercury. Um, and it's not the fish, it is your mercury filling. So Now, why are dentists okay. still placing these amalgams if the research on mercury is so definitive? What is going on with the dental community? Ever since I, so I never placed the mercury thing, but I learned it in university, but I knew luckily, so in university it was just like, uh, it's a very good grafting material. It lasts forever. It's for free. The, the insurance in, in Germany still subsidizes it. So this is what the NHS in the UK or the general insurance companies in Germany pay for. 
and you can opt out and, and pay some and uh, have something different. But luckily, my dad didn't do amalgam fillings ever since 1989 or something. So I knew that he didn't do it because of some health things back then. And I just found it was the ugliest thing to do. I could never, from my aesthetic point of view, place an amalgam filling. So it was a no-brainer for me. But actually, the amalgam filling got my attention to all the things connecting it. Because my first doctor, when I, was in surgery, when I learned surgery after university, he was still placing amalgam fillings. He was very high skilled in, in high-tech dentistry, like the surgical part, but still did the amalgam fillings. So I told him, no, I can't do this. And then I looked into research, found Dr. Didi Stringer, the Akimoto, all these guys. And from there on, like on YouTube back then, from there on, everything I learned before about biochemistry, supplements, nutrition, it just clicked because it's the same thing. Like I was preparing my mind already for this and then I got sucked into it. And with all the knowledge I have, I could never have it. And you have to remove it as highly toxic waste product out of your office. So I, from this point on, when I knew this, like, this makes no sense. I cannot put highly toxic waste in anybody that I have to remove with a special truck because it's so toxic. That makes no sense. Yeah. So I, because we had, alt uh, now we're lucky, we're living in the age of alternatives. So I don't need to place an a mercury mm -hmm. filling, but of course we have to remove them under safe removal. Mm -hmm. Never do any heavy metal detoxification. Loads of my functional medicine doctors um, would start people on chelating agents and stuff, but it didn't have a look in their mouth. And if you start like mobilizing things in your body and not being able to excrete because you still have the main source here installed in your central nervous system, this will make more problems. So you have to really time that correctly. Yeah. That's what I mean. That foundational work for health optimization at least is removal of these things. If you see it from a conventional dentistry point of view and it's only about filling the teeth with like to bite, of course, they still do this. The FDA at the moment is again looking for, finally, I hope so, um, uh, looking for ways to finally um, ban it, I think okay. so. Like, for example, all the Scandinavian countries have banned it more than 10 years ago. Russia has banned it 30 years ago. And just in general, they just banned mercury from any use, so they couldn't use it in the mouse anymore. Mm. But it's, again, it's, it is biased by industry and maybe bigger pharmacy companies or whatever, like groups like FDA and stuff. It takes so long because they're just bureaucratic and okay. then the dentist didn't read all the research, just knows what he learned in university, which is also outdated at, at, in some things at least. So the research is there, just have to open your, you have to be open-minded and read it. Yeah. You cannot just say, there is no research showing it, it's just wrong. Yeah, yeah. You just don't know maybe. But that doesn't mean you don't have to look into it. Tell us about cavitations, NECO, osteonecrotic bone disease. You know, tell us a little bit about these things when a tooth gets pulled, when wisdoms get pulled and they're not safely removed. Uh, uh, tell us some more about that. So cavitation is the layman's term for a medical thing called NICO, N-I-C-O. Or FDOJ. NICO stands for neuralgia inducing cavitational osteonecrosis, which is um, a, a pathological term actually coined by um, Jerry Bucot back in the 80s. The problem here is it only stands for one symptom, a neurological symptom. That means, for example, trigeminal neuralgia, and then is correlating or connected to this cavitation, this osteonecrotic jawbone process. So we now better say FDOJ, which is fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone. And you can only give the diagnosis while doing or after doing surgery because you have to actually see this. And this is a bit of a difficulty. So you, we're talking about fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone in your jawbone that is basically not existing in medical literature or in university at least. There are peer-reviewed studies done by Dr. Johann Lechner, the Yoda of cavitations, He's doing this for 40 years now, but it's still not connected. And the problem is you don't feel them. It's silent inflammation most of the time. And um, you don't learn about them. So how can you know? The thing is you have, they develop most of the time if you get any sort of extraction without being prepared. It's basically at the beginning just 
a sign of a lack of anabolism, a lack of nutrients to build tissue. That's it. When you get, for example, the wisdom teeth pulled. And then it doesn't really osseointegrate or it doesn't really ossify. Your body just doesn't have the nutrients. And it ends up having a cave, like in the spot, let's say a wisdom tooth area. So in this cave, over time, it's, of course, anaerobic. And all these bacteria, as what I talked about earlier, the anaerobics, they love caves. And then they compartmentalize. And what they found in studies there, Dr. Dietrich Stringhardt or Johann Lechner, they found everything. They, they researched thousands of um, cavitational products after doing surgery. They found parasites, fungi, glyphosates, mold, um, heavy metals. Like, it's kind of like a huge dumping area in this field. And the problem is still nobody diagnoses it because it's literally not existing. And you re that's why I really focus on telling about it because you need to know. It could be that you have perfect teeth and nobody sees anything, but you had your wisdom teeth pulled because of space, uh, spacing issues. And ever since then, you're chronically fatigued. Nobody finds anything. Or you have an eczema or you have irritable bowel syndrome or you're depressed. And it's only because of these mushy, fatty, degenerative areas in your jawbone, activating your trigeminus and your parasympathetic vagal nerve every day, 24 seven. And the area that's most affected is the wisdom tooth area because in Western world, we don't have space. We can go into the reasons why this is yeah. in a second, but let's say we don't have space. You get it pulled. You're not prepared. You have no nutrients, no vitamin D3, whatever. And your body just not able to heal it. And then you have a chronic inflamed area, chronic infection there, chronic inflammation, and also a special chemokine in there, which is called R-A-N-T-S. Rantis, or you find it in medical literature as CCL5, just a, a chemokine that actually tells your body, it's, at the beginning, it's a good one. It tells your body to repair. But if it's ongoing chronically, it can lead to all sorts of problems. Just PubMed or do a Google Scholar and type in Rantis plus multiple sclerosis. You initially find 1,000 papers. Wow. You, uh, but then you have to call it a MECO. What about the Rantis activates rheumatoid arthritis? Then you would call it a RICO. What about it? It is correlated. What about it's um, cancer promoting? There is a study showing from Johann Lechner and um, what is the other guy? Um, yeah, Volker von Baer and Johann Lechner. I think three years ago, they correlated the high rentis from uh, cavitation with uh, mammalian and what is it? Mama Mama yeah. C A. Yeah. Why? Because of the ongoing activation. First of all, Rantis just tells your body it builds something, but 24 seven over years, it switches the flip and it gets the other way around. So then it's a cancer promoting osteonecrotic jawbone. So then you should call it Kiko or what? So you know why Nico yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. FDOJ would be perfect, but to diagnose it, you need a cone beam, a three dimensional X-ray. And on the cone beam, you can only see an osteolytic change there. Like, it looks like black instead of like a mushy bony area, like a sponge's bone. It's kind of like black. And then I know there's mostly fatty tissue in it. And I'm doing sur any surgery I do, it's always the all-in-one concept. So I plan on removing all metals, all root canals, all cavitations. It's kind of like a bed and breakfast. It's all included. I always planned it with it because it's such a huge, huge impact on your overall health. You can imagine chronic inflammation on your trigeminal nerve, on your vagal nerve, transporting whatever is in there retrograde into your central nervous system and from there onto all your joints and all your tissues 24 7. if you get how your body works it's just a no-brainer of mm -hmm. course all the stuff that gets produced here will be transported in your whole body mm -hmm. it's the same when you inject a hormone of course it will work systemically yeah. right but it just seems like it's so important it seems like it's just such a an important area that's not looked at i mean i think that root cause documentary Dominic said that 94% of women that got breast cancer had a root canal on the same side. And whether that some of it's causative or some of it's just correlated, we're not actually sure. But there it is. 94% or 97% in some of the research had breast cancer. Those that had breast cancer had a root canal on the same side. But the public doesn't know that that documentary was pulled off Netflix you know, you speak to dentists. I've spoken to previous dentists. I've been in a dental building for 22 years. They're not interested. They're not interested in finding out. They're still doing root canals. You know, how is this going to change? 
this is only going to change by the by talking about it i think and training them so i'm doing this for long long years now it took me years to only get my friends to now see that this is something so one of my best friends was always like this when he saw me he's like dude stay away with this it's just you're like the witch doctor for me <laughs> but then he, has, then he had his own problems and now he's the he's the the best like he's like the biggest fan he's like dumb thank you it took me a while but thank you very much because now i changed my whole life because a different perspective i might have missed all these years that i really can help people and this is what actually this is really good that i was able to be consistent and never back down even if i get all these backstabbers and like shit storms and whatever and like lots of emotional discussions with the colleagues like mm -hmm. the ones that pulled root cause while well, are my colleagues and i'm a big fan of all my dental colleagues because you have to have the skills but imagine out there all the dentists you don't now most people nowadays associate dentists with pain and i hate to go to the dentist but my, my patients, they are looking forward to their appointment for months and they prepare themselves. And when they finally see me, they're the happiest people. They're like, oh, finally, we can get rid of all this interference. So I have a fun time with them. Good emotional connections, good friends of mine, all great people. So you will change your whole practice to yourself have a nicer life. It's slower dentistry. A friend of mine calls it slow dentistry. Because I only do one, maximum two patients a day, huge surgeries for sure. And we try to get like really 100% everything out of it. It's not like this and this patient and 50 a day and whatever. It's like the opposite. It's really like high skill. So I don't see why it should be contrary. I think it's just the next level. And any dentist out there who would be remotely interested in something new on top of the nice techniques, like helping people getting even healthier, this is the way to start it. And it's actually starting and took me 10 years to be able, or 15 years to be able to talk about this in a, in a broad audience now, like worldwide, international. And I do this just to help change because me, I personally, just by having a clinic, my impact is very small. I might be able to do 30,000 surgeries, I calculated. If I train 1,000 dentists that do 30,000 surgeries, it's 30 million. See? And then if you talk about it with social media and we spread it and all us health coaches finally notice and then you find a dentist and you maybe send him to me or somebody else, we train. We can get a huge network of health optimization folks out there and really have an impact. And this is what pulls me every day to do this. Mm -hmm. It's not about me, not at all. It's just about the mission to help as many people as possible mm -hmm. getting healthy. And I want to have this knowledge in functional medicine because it's still not there. And it wasn't 10 years ago when I did the course and I know Mark Hyman is a very good guy and he's a very skilled doctor and he's a nutrition and I love the stuff and I think this is something we have to teach more also for all the functional medicine doctors because they maybe try to do anything possible in terms of diet they have all biohacks covered they do hyperbaric they do the IVs they do the blood works that's what I do too but they don't have the dentist part removing the source and you never get to the point. It's like in a movie root cause, the documentation, where he does anything, even shamanism, even all spiritual things, but he still is not superhuman. They just pull one root canal and it flips the switch because this is mostly the one thing you need because it's in there like a splinter 24-7, attacking your immune system, loading up stress on your liver, on your gut system. It's a whole health matrix. And this is what I train. Like It's functional mm -hmm. medicine, the overlap of functional medicine, high-tech dentistry, biohacking, health optimization to make a bigger picture out of it. Of course, we have everything in the clinic to do this, but yeah. this is something that's a concept now. Mm. Tell us a little bit about at EMFs, you know, I've trained as a geobiologist that I said, how important it is when you've got metal in your mouth, never mind the high wow. levels of mercury, aluminum, cadmium, lead, you know, you become an antenna, the more aluminum you've got in your brain, you just receive <laughs> more of this RF the whole time. You're just literally receiving it. Tell us about the role of, you know, metal in your mouth, titanium implants and EMFs. Yeah, I actually had a, the last month I had a few nice, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, I had a few nice um, infographics about exactly this topic mm. that, that basically all metals that you put into your body could also be piercings, but let's focus on the mouth, are small antennas. Even the mercury particles that are in your jawbone from 20 years of um, wearing it will interfere with the Wi-Fi, the 3G, the 4G, the 5G, 
And there's studies showing that if you do a cell phone call, that the, radi uh, that the waves go to the cell phone and then to all the metals in your mouse, amplify it there, and you know that you're an electric being. Of course, it will change the, yeah. the intercellular currents and all the things, and also, of course, um, make a current in there. And this makes, again, oxidative stress, but also you can receive, like there are people that can really receive radio stations. But it may, yeah, they have, they, I have heard about a few cases that really can fine tune it so that it's really a radio station. So it's not a big deal. But imagine you just hear noises like really like psychotic noises. If like if you a radio station is like yeah. you hear that, this can happen because you have of course it's frequency now. Yeah. It's just basic electrophysics, and you have to be really careful. And there is a ter term called electrohypersensitivity, and I see so many patients. There's actually a whole group out there in Germany that have, luckily they have all my articles on their webpage. And they, because again, most metal you have installed in your body, besides piercings, is in your mouth. And you cannot take it out. You need to go see someone. Even a titanium implant. There are studies showing that if you have a titanium implant and the electromagnetic, for example, if you have a phone call, it heats up to four degrees, which destroys the whole bone surrounding it. It's kind of like high fever. So if you get 5G on top of it, or 1G more, it's probably like 40 degrees and they just fall out. I don't know. It's not yet there everywhere. And also, this is one I get, had last week in my Instagram feed. If you have a phone call and you have mercury fillings, you have an increased mercury vapor outcome out of, uh, outflow of the filling. So you really wow. have to know your research. Read the book. It's somewhere over there. Read the EMF book from Joe McCola. Yeah. It's also written as my book, like a layman's book, yeah. with loads of research how to DIY it yourself. You, this is, it's really not a, it's really not a woo woo thing. Like electromagnetic fields are the new, I would say it's the new cigarettes. Like he says, yeah. it is really yeah. cancerogenic. And if you have metals in your mouth, it's even worse. Nice. So, yeah. the, Despite, if you, despite doing all the cool biohacks and health optimization tricks, and your diet is on in check. You wear the blockers. You have your house EMF free. You wear EMF devices. You basically do everything: inject peptides, whatever, IVs, and you still can't sleep. Why you didn't? You probably have to have a look in your mouth and yeah. look for more interference. This is the other way around. If you're yeah. on a health optimization trip, you've done everything, but you're still not superhuman. Check there. Hmm. The other people that I yeah. see are chronic sick people that need this as an entrance to finally get a bit better. So. Hmm. But what I hear you saying, Dr. Dom, is actually we should start in the mouth because that's a yeah. statement I made. 70% of all chronic disease starts in the mouth. If you read Dr. Levy's book, I mean, he's got some, you know, his, his part of his book, silent oral infections cause most heart attacks and breast cancers. I mean, that's what's on the front of this, of this book here. So in essence, you know, we should be starting with the mouth because it's going to move the needle probably the most out of most of these sort of, you know, interventions. And that takes me on to the next point about children. You know, how do we manage our children? I think you've got three children. I've got two. You know, how do we manage these children? Try and keep the mouth open. You know, for example, my wife breastfed with my son, but for other reasons couldn't breastfeed with my daughter. So how do we, are there exercises to keep this mouth open, to keep the space open? How do we manage children? So let's say the best thing would be, like you already said, actually, to breastfeed your children if possible not everybody can why because if you suck on on the nipple to get the milk out of there you need 10 times more strength than on a baby bottle this does develop your whole lower jaw coming forward at the same time you breathe to your nose you get nose breathing white pellets and a good shape for these things and also if your wife or if the mom is healthy and prepared for before she gets pregnant and has all the nutrients covered and also for the breast milk makes it into like a nice solid food there because of what she eats this is everything they need to get really solid um, teeth and microbiomes and breastfeeding the baby has a totally different microbiome but then when it starts eating it's totally different so my perspective is at the moment we need to have dentists in place, biological dentists, that are able to really repair people with the highest skills and using all biohacks and stuff. But for our future generation, which is our kid, is 
actually we shouldn't need a dentist anymore, but we need the health optimization doctor who tells the parents, hey, why don't you not look onto how to design your nutrients? What, what, what are you feeding your, your children? There are studies showing that just a vitamin D3 deficiency lead to cavities nowadays. There are tons of studies actually. Also gluten intolerance is a big one for cavities. Like, that's why it's important to basically skip this. So we have to educate actually the, our, the parents like us right now to really look at it. So what I do with my children is, I'm, okay, I'm very good with nutrition and all these things. But I know there's kids, so they, of course, want their sweets and stuff. And I'm not a dogmatic guy. I was for sure when I was learning. And when you go into all rabbit holes and you do the 100% version all the time, you are. But now it's like this. What I try is uh, I gamify it or personalize it. So me and my sons, we are superheroes. What are superheroes eating? What are they wanting to become? We want to jump high. We want to think fast. We want to have muscle. Or do we want to be a fat pig or like have rotten teeth? And the good thing is always they're smart. I explain them day by day what builds your body. It's protein. Ah, okay, what, should, what is protein? It's meat, dad. It's fish, dad. It's not gummy bears, dad. Okay, they know this. So I want them to really learn by themselves but see that it helps. And this is why I also give them sweets to tell them some, at some point, okay, it's fine. Eat this. There are a few things that I don't allow but – I want them to experience how they feel after eating, for example, uh, milk yogurt because they might not tolerate it. And if they then feel, oh, dad, I'm sick, my stomach. And I was like, what did you eat? I had this with my neighbors. Okay, now you know. You want to eat it again? Ah, oh, no, I don't know. And I have one nice anecdote. I went to Croatia this summer. And so my, my oldest son is five and three is the second one. And there was a little girl. And they didn't notice, but I knew she had like the most rotten baby teeth, like the really black ones. I saw it in a second, of course, but my kids didn't. And I, at one point I was like, hey, dudes, look at her teeth. They are like rotten. And they're like, what is it? And then they're like, huh? what is with the teeth? And I explained, this is because the, she eats only crap. She has like not the nutrients to build it. It's rotten now. And then on the next day, this little lady, this little girl came in with a pack of Oreo cookies. Mm. And I was just outside eating my breakfast, but looking at them. And then I see this girl like presenting my kids, you want a cookie? And I see the panic in there as they're like, <gasps> no thanks. A three year old says no thanks. And ever since then, Carl, the three year old is like, no, no dad, I, I have perfect teeth now. I cannot eat this. Look at this. She, he still remembers this. And this is how I, I go about it. It's kind of like I try to figure out movies mm. and then have, have them have the sweets. I look for things like no processed foods if possible because I want to avoid um, highly refined oils combined with sugar and all mm. these things. Of course, they taste amazing, I know. But if they don't taste it and don't experience it, they don't like it. So they, they are, of course, allowed to eat gummy bears and stuff like this, which is pure sugar. Mm -hmm. Or they can eat a vegan ice cream if it's made out of, let's say, cashew milk. No problem. Yeah. Or we make our own stuff. And mm -hmm. I showed him how to build a protein smoothie that, or protein yogurt. This is more, I think it's more educating and training. Mm -hmm. and, but if you go to a, uh, to a restaurant in the morning, it's insane. The kid's menu is always the shittiest food. It's like a white bread with Nutella on top, like a nougat cream, sugar stuff. And on, on the side, you get a, you get a chocolate bar. This yeah. is the breakfast. And I'm like, what? Yeah. So this is like they are in their building phase. Everything they eat is way more important. And sugar is their alcohol. They get way more addicted than we do. So we, I really have to like tell them, okay, five pieces, that's it. And also I don't want to take it away because then it would be imbalanced again. Yeah. So if it's too extreme. So you know what I mean? So this is, I think the future is, the mindset is, your body, if it's healthy, is immune against cavity, it's immune against root canals then. It's also immune against these cavitations because if you properly feed it, you probably don't need braces. You probably don't need your wisdom teeth to be pulled mm. because you will have the space. Mm. So it all comes back to how we all start and mm. this is the lifestyle piece again. And this is why this is so important in our whole clinic and why I have a whole food design concept and yeah, all these things in place. I can do the surgery, but... The, the four weeks, the four months, six months later, when it's really bone building phase, this is when I have to have my patients be trained to take the nutrients to really be anabolic. 
Great. I've got two more questions, uh, Dr. Dominic, because I know we're coming to the end of the show. My, my question to you is just give us your top three biohacks. I mean, obviously not including sort of your oral health and your dental health. What are your top three biohacks that you implement in your life? So the first of all is maybe not a biohack, but groundwork would be that you have a, per, that you have a very good nutritional design. That you're not, and I don't talk about any sort of mindset. So you, we have to start thinking in nutrients. Where do you get your nutrients from doesn't matter at the, at the beginning. So you can be a vegan or a vegetarian or paleo or keto, but you have to make sure that you get the building blocks of life. So I would, all my patients actually, I let them calculate their protein macros for these two weeks with the goal of having two grams per kilogram a day so that I know they have the sustainability to build tissue. That's it. Because also protein is the building block for your immune system for liver phase one, two, for detoxification, basically for everything. Proteus, it's of utmost importance, the Greek word for it. And if I would add in a biohack to this is buy yourself some essential amino acids. I do loads of it every day because your body actually takes the nutrients without even needing it to digest and just builds it. It's 99% anabolic. So I have, this is from my own research too. So this would be the first thing, get a nutritional lifestyle concept. Then of course, optimize Optimize everything around your house for EMF blocking. And just like tricks like, dude, switch off your Wi-Fi at nighttime, go into airplane mode and wear these blue blockers when it's getting dark outside. Because you are, I am extremely photosensitive. I don't know how my wife does it. She's not. Uh, I need to have these things. Otherwise, I won't sleep or be super awake. So those are really putting a trigger. This one is our mutual friend who introduced us, Tim. Yeah. He gave me these exact glasses because I wasn't aware of it. I, I knew, I thought it's just a biohacking thing and I, yeah. I wasn't a biohacker. I, yeah. I didn't see myself as a bio. I'm more like a health optimization enthusiast or specialist. And, but of course I'm also a biohacker now because I do all these things. So this would be two and do any sort of exercises to get your bodies and fluids moving. Like exercise is a very important pillar. Nature grounding is something I do every morning. So mobility. So basically it's just a, like my whole day is structured it's around like these groundwork things, nutrition, macro to, to micro, and block out these EMFs, go more into nature, like barefoot a bit, like, uh, or even go outside, do some exercise and mobility. It's really important for dentists out there. That's why I'm giving courses there. Because you get a, a hunchback cripple because you're always in this position and mm. everything hurts and you get super tensed up. So I start every day with the mobility routine. I actually start with aminos and the mobility routine. And then I do my workouts four times a week. I go out, run a little bit. Skateboarding is still um, what I love to do. And yeah, because time is probably the most precious thing I have. I'm, I have to schedule everything in. But I schedule these things in. This is also a biohack you should do prioritize your life. This is probably the most important thing. What do you really want to do? Find it and then organize your time accordingly. How much time do you want to allocate to the passion you're doing in your clinic? How much time do you want to allocate to your family? How much time do you need for sports? How much time do you have in total? This is how my brain works. I'm very probably a very um, numbers type of guy, yeah. dopamine guy. Uh, but this is how I live. So I get everything scheduled in. And this is why I never feel busy or stressed because I'm more in control and plan in advance and know exactly over years to fine tune and precise. So I know exactly when my time for surgery is. So my whole clinic is built for me like this. So that I have a staff, we have 20 people in the staff and I can just fly in at 10 a.m. after I've done four hours already with family, nutrition and mobility. And... Then I go in, be super focused for five to six hours straight. And then I have to do something else. Yeah. I have a lot, you know, I have a few companies and a health food concept store and lots of different things of so 40 team, 40 people in my staff. So, but I like these routine things, maybe an autistic part of me, but mm. this is, this is what makes me not having to think about anything because yeah. it's always the same thing. And just for me, if I don't have my food prepared, then I get crazy. If it's there, I just eat it and I go on with my job. Like, no time to think about all these things. Mm. The first thought I have is always when I'm in surgery. Yeah. 
Maybe. But I think what happens is you've got a real purpose, you've got a real why, and this why drives the systems and processes you're putting in place. You know, a fantastic book that I think you, uh, you've just naturally adopted is James's Clear's book called Atomic Habits. It's sold over a million copies. And you've structured your life around your values and what's very important to you. Your purpose, yes. your family, your calling as a biological dentist, you as a teacher. So I think that's, uh, you know, the, you're the epitome of just structuring your life around that. And so I salute you. I thank you for your time. Uh, you're a health optimizer, a biohacker, a biological dentist. You're a naturopathic physician. You're an author. You're running multiple businesses. And uh, I just thank you for your calling and your purpose. I'm going to get the word out. We're going to slice and dice this you know, video. We're going to put it on social media. We'll send you the clips. Why? Because we want to get out this trumpet call, this trumpet call that says your oral health and your dental health is important for every single part of bodily systems you've got, not just your mouth. Yes. And so thank you, Dr. Dominic. I wish you well. I can't wait for your second book because I'm sure you, your mind's ticking over about that and uh, the <laughs> second book you're going to write. And one day, hopefully, we'll meet at the Health Optimization Summit with uh, Tim Gray. It would be a privilege to, to shake your hand, get to know you a bit more. And, you know, hopefully we can maybe get you to South Africa and introduce you to my biological dentist, Dr. Orlando Rojas. I'm sure he knows a lot of people in Switzerland that you know. And possibly we can, uh, you know, as you get older, fly you out or get dentists to fly out into Switzerland or wherever you train. Just to empower people, as you said, the more dentists and the more dental practitioners you can train, the more we're going to change this world, you know, one person at a time, one dentist at a time, one patient at a time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's kind of like a wolf pack we have to build, a wolf optimization pack. And I love to have finally these lockdown things over because I'm a big fan of being in person and shaking mm. hands and vibing and all these things yeah. and really spread, like, Basically, spread the knowledge and information and give it to everybody. That's amazing. I high five you here. This word. Yeah. Great. Thanks for having me, man. Pleasure. Just uh, before you go, uh, your social handles. I do want to start following you on Instagram. Tell us where people can find you, your website, all your social media handles. So the Instagram is called Dr. Dom One, D O M E and a One. Um, I'm on YouTube, Dr. Dom Nishwitz. My website is is dna aesthetics.de but i will probably send you stuff for the show notes right yeah um yeah in my instagram there's a tab bio where you probably find the most related things like all the podcasts articles and things so that the information comes out and everybody can learn information is for free so use mm -hmm. it that's the most important thing don't just right. read it and don't apply you need to apply absolutely, absolutely. what is it like Ex execution beats knowledge all the time. Ex 100 percent. Well, I think you're gonna. Man. Yeah, well, I think you got to execute the right knowledge, and I think that's where you come in. You can give people the knowledge; they've got to execute. They've got to make it happen. They've got to put the systems. They've got to put the processes in place, just like you have. And that's got to be based on a purpose, and that's got to be based on a calling, because every that's, single one of us have a calling and a purpose in this world. Thanks. I Dr. would 100 percent agree. Brilliant. Thanks, Steve. Thanks so much, uh, Dominic.